a mother's desperation. Since leaving home, I still can't decide what to do. I thought Edgar's death was the worst tragedy that could ever happen to our family. Lilith and Samuel are so young. I can't lose them. Our house wasn't safe anymore. Those things got inside. Lily and Sam were both bitten. I managed to use Edgar's shotgun to kill the beasts. Before they did any real damage, Lily got it the worst. I cleaned and patched their wounds, but both kids came down with a fever almost instantly. I knew of a safer place. The door in our home was hanging off its hinges. We couldn't stay. Maybe if Edgar was here to fix it. We're at the Concord Speakeasy now. I knew about it from when Edgar worked here. I've taken the kids up to one of the rooms and searched through the place. I found a few medical supplies and useful tools. Looking at the kids' wounds, I applied some antibacterial liquid and gave them more antibiotics I got, brought from home. Lily is getting worse. Both their bites look infected. I need to find a doctor, but I don't like my chances. I nailed down the windows that I could. That I could reach. And I found a reserve key in the reception. The place wasn't even locked when we arrived. I went out to look for help and found some water and a few things. I heard howls not far from me. It's dangerous outside. Both kids refuse to drink or eat. Their eyes are becoming milky white. My babies. Why couldn't it have been me? I tried again to give the kids water and food. Sam wildly lashed out and tried to bite me. I pushed him back and ran from the room, slamming the door and locking it behind me. Both kids beat on the door like animals. There has to be a cure for this. I won't accept that my babies are gone. It's clear to me what they want to eat, what the others eat. I need to feed them. It took me a while, but I used the hammer I found and Ripped a few boards from the wall shared by the room I'm staying in and the one I have locked my babies in. They can see me now, but it sends them into a rage. I can't calm them down anymore. They howl from hunger and bite each other. Watching this breaks my heart. I decided I know what needs to be done to keep them alive long enough for a cure to be found. They must eat. I crept into the street and took one of their bodies, dragging it back inside. The face was already half eaten, but from the long curly hair and distinctive pearl necklace, I could recognize it was Mrs. Wilson. I dragged her body into the kitchen and took a carving knife in my hand. I started several times to try to cut into her, but my hands trembled and faltered. Then I heard their screams upstairs. I closed my eyes and took off her arm. It was much harder than I thought. The knife was not the best tool for this job. While hacking at the bone, I heard voices in the corridor. I took the shotgun and went to check, but all the doors were still closed. Something is wrong here. Maybe it's just me. I took Virginia Wilson's arm upstairs and noticed it still wore her wedding ring. It felt cold. I threw it through the hole in the wall and my babies rushed to it like ravenous piranhas. I wanted to be sick. Once they had eaten though, they seemed to become calm. I stayed a while with them and told them tales I remember from books we'd read before bedtime. Lily's favorite one was about a beautiful princess. I read it to her often. She's like her. Even with skin peeling away, she'll always be my beautiful girl. I cut off another part of the body and dropped it through the wall. It seems their hunger is insatiable. My skin is changing, falling off in patches. It burns, but I feel okay so far. God, I hope I don't start to change, too. Who will feed the children if I lose my mind like they have? 
There was a locked door under the stairwell, and I found the key for it today, hidden in a box under the bar. It's a cellar. I found an operating table and medical instruments, but why is that stuff down there? Edgar worked here for years. What were they doing here? I hope this stuff was brought here after the bombs, but... I can see trash piled up around the base of the table, indicating it's been here a long time. I'm confused. I've noticed other strange things within this place, too. If I had another choice, I wouldn't stay here. Did I even really know my husband? I feel like I don't even know myself anymore. In any case, I guess this is exactly what I need to continue my grim task. God, I hope help comes soon. None of this seems real. Today, while out searching, I came across Mayor Thompson trying to drag a body from the street. Was he feeding somebody, too? His dirty suit hung from his thin body, his cheekbones sunken in and skeletal. His skin looked blistered and burnt. Like mine. I asked him for help or if he had heard anything about a cure for the infected or any military safe zones, anything. But the bastard just dropped the body he was dragging and walked away without even acknowledging me. I could see in his eyes he was already gone. I wondered, maybe I could use them to feed my babies. The thought sickened me. I decided not to write in a while. The tasks I have to endure don't much put me in the mood for writing about it. I've been out looking for survivors every day, hoping on news of a cure, hoping for any news. Radio stations are still not broadcasting anything. I've cleared most of the bodies from the streets surrounding the speakeasy. At night I hear voices from within the building. But each time I check I find no one. I haven't slept properly in weeks. Day 24, I think. A few days ago I seen a man from the window in the street looking through trash cans for food. He looked harmless, though. I think he might have been an addict. He seemed to be high on something, talking to himself. He's back out there now. Looks like he's heading in, this direction, but there are no more bodies left around. The turned ones have dragged off or consumed whatever was left. My babies haven't eaten in over a week. They grow restless. I need to get his trust and lure him to the speakeasy. If I kill him in the street, it'll be another body I have to drag in here. I need to save my shotgun shells for the turned ones. I'll take the kitchen knife, just in case. God forgive me for what I am about to do.